So the three quarterbacks of the all decade all decade team of the 70s are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame with the exception of Ken Stabler. That's about to be rectified. Roger Staubach, Terry Bradshaw, and Ken Stabler. You could make the case that Ken Stabler is the most popular Raider of all time. That case could easily be made. Raider Nation is here. The Academy Award winning actor Tom Hanks is known to end all of his emails by quoting Ken Stabler, saying, throw deep, baby. We're about to get thrown into the Hall of Fame with Ken Stabler. We're getting there. The snake, here's the snake. Hello again from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. To watch him play quarterback and to look at him without a helmet, Ken Stabler was without a doubt, all right, we're going to say it, he was an Oakland Raider. Al Davis said it, just win, baby, and that's exactly what he did, win, baby. This three-time Alabama All-American that became a starter for the Oakland Raiders in 1973. In the next five seasons, Oakland played in all five AFC championship games. Their record over that five-year span, 56-13-1. and one. They won Super Bowl XI by crushing the Vikings. The reason they weren't in any more Super Bowls you might remember that the Steelers and the Dolphins in the 70s were pretty good themselves. The Snake was two-time MVP, and by the time he finished playing in Houston and New Orleans, he had the second highest career pass completion percentage behind only Joe Montana. Hall of Famer Freddie Bolitnikoff, some of the other Raiders will help on stage, and to present the late, great Ken Stabler into the hall, his Hall of Fame coach had home recuperating from some surgery, John Madden. Throughout their colorful and illustrious history, the Raiders have famously pursued a commitment to excellence. And no player in franchise history fulfilled that commitment quite like Ken the Snake Stabler. And Stabler was on the money! The legendary lefty grew up in Foley, Alabama, bypassing minor league baseball contract offers from the Yankees and Astros to play for Bear Bryant at the University of Alabama. Stabler scrambles, avoids tacklers, and again throws to Perkins for another 45-yard scoring play. He finished with an 18-2-1 record as a starter for the time, providing a glimpse of what was to come. Kenny the Snake Stabler keeps the ball, sweeps left end. Stabler became a Raider in 1968. Al Davis's Raiders were a unique franchise, carrying themselves with a swagger and toughness that had an intimidating effect on opponents. The Snake fit right in. Stabler's elusive scrambling style made him a dangerous playmaker through the air and on the ground, and his confident demeanor was a perfect fit for the tough, take-no-prisoners mentality of the 1970s Raiders. And Stabler was on the money, and the Raiders have pulled this one out of the fire. He would be slowed by a series of knee injuries, but in fitting Stabler fashion, he learned to improvise. Though the once frequent scrambler reinvented himself as a more traditional dropback passer, the results were the same. Whatever that thing was, that focus, that concentration, that competitiveness, he could just step it up a notch when you needed it. Stabler rolling to the left. He's going to go. He wins it in. Touchdown, Oakland. Under the tutelage of head coach John Madden, Stabler's Raiders were a postseason fixture. In 1972, Oakland engaged in a memorable playoff struggle with the eventual champion Pittsburgh Steelers. It would go down as one of the most famous games in sports history. After leading the league in passing touchdowns, Stabler was named league MVP in 1974. He again led the league in touchdown passes in 1976, taking the Raiders to Super Bowl XI. These are hungry football teams, and the world waits to find out who's going to wear that Super Bowl ring. There, he faced off against Minnesota's famed Purple People Leaders defense and future Hall of Fame quarterback, Fran Tarkenton. 
Stabler was unfazed, marching his team up and down the field in a second quarter flurry that broke the game open. I don't know how to describe the feeling. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's more than I expected. Super Bowl XI was part of a historic Oakland run. The Raiders won five consecutive AFC West titles, and Stabler became the first quarterback since the AFL-NFL merger to take his team to five straight conference title games. Stabler reached four Pro Bowls in his 15 NFL seasons. He remains the Raiders' all-time franchise leader in wins, passing yards, and passing touchdowns. But beyond the stats, Stabler also exemplified the best of what the Raiders aspired to be. I always said that if I had one quarterback to make a drive the length of the field at the end of the game to win that game, that guy would be Ken Stable, number 12. We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame. He was tough, he was confident, and he was a devoted fixture in the city of Oakland. Stabler remains a symbol of that golden era an iconic representation of excellence so frequently sought, and for a few rare individuals, memorably found. It is my pleasure to present for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, my friend, Ken Stabler. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Ken Stabler for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, please welcome Ken's grandsons, Justin and Jake Moyes his fellow Raider Hall of Famers. And representing Ken's presenter, Hall of Fame coach John Batten, please welcome Hall of Fame receiver, Fred Boletnikov. Look at that scene, the snake's grandchildren. One of them is unable to contain his emotions. Fred Boletnikov, the stork is up there. Brown, the ghost, Big Casper, Art Shell. It's a long time coming. And Kurt, we were just seeing that video and wondering how in the world is Ken Stable not been in the Hall of Fame prior to today? And I think it's amazing because a lot of the people that are out here probably didn't get a chance to really watch and appreciate who Ken Stable was in that era. Uh, but you're right. I mean, the stats are there. The accomplishments are there. The leadership is there. Uh, I'm glad that he's finally there in Canton. If we only were able to now hear a speech from Kenny the Snake Stabler. But alas, not to be. Eddie DeBartolo is next. The longtime owner of the 49ers with Dungeon Far behind him here in Canton. 